Hello everyone, welcome back to AI and Games. Today, we're going to talk about Halo. Master Chief, defend this station. Yes sir, I need a weapon. Right this way. Surely, you've been living on this planet long enough? Okay, for the benefit of those not familiar, and to those new to planet Earth, first of all, welcome, Halo is a first-person shooter franchise published by Microsoft. Originally created by Bungie, now famous for another little space shooter game called Destiny, and is now developed by 343 Industries. Now, Halo is not the first FPS we've discussed in the AI and game series, given we've already looked at the likes of First Encounter Assault Recon, aka Fear. But Halo has a lot to offer to aspiring game devs when it comes to combat AI. So in this video, we're going to discuss a major part of what makes the enemy AI tick in Halo 2 and Halo 3 by highlighting an AI technique called Behaviour Trees. What do they do? How do they work? And why is this technique continuing to prove popular for game AI development? There was only one chief. Why? Before we go into the details of how these systems work, Let's take a minute to talk about the characters themselves. The enemies faced in Halo are varied given that, as is explained by the narrative, the human race is essentially at war with a coalition of numerous alien races, with characters such as Grunts, Jackals, Elites and Brutes all appearing throughout the original trilogy. Dear humanity, we regret being alien bastards. We regret coming to Earth. And we most definitely regret the Corps just blew up our raggedy ass fleet. Hoorah! One of the benefits of the narrative is that it allows for the player to be introduced to a range of visually unique and interesting characters. While we like to talk about AI in these videos, it's important to appreciate how vital the visual elements of gameplay lend to the player's understanding of enemy behaviour. Each Covenant character behaves differently from one another, and in many respects this is a reflection of the characteristics we as players may interpret courtesy of their visual design. For example, grunts are small and awkward creatures, so it's perhaps not surprising that they often react in a panic to the player, given that John 117, or the Master Chief, which is you by the way, are meant to be 7 feet tall and weigh around 1,000 pounds. Meanwhile, jackals, given their rather shifty looking nature, act more or less as snipers, and the bigger characters like elites and brutes are far more aggressive, in line with their increased physical stature. In short, the use of character art is useful to help the player identify the different behaviours expected of the enemy. Ultimately, this helps you strategize more effectively, given that the character art provides visual confirmation that the enemies will behave differently from one another. Think of it like Pac-Man Ghosts, only with a much bigger art budget. Stay with the Master Chief, he'll know what to do. Yes, sir! As mentioned earlier, the AI behind the Covenant is relying on a technique known as Behaviour Trees. Behaviour trees provide another approach to modelling behaviour and logic from, say, finite state machines, a method we've previously looked at in both Fear and the Batman Arkham series. But what makes them so special? Well, it comes down to how the tree expresses and executes behaviour. A behaviour tree is, well, a tree. A tree of nodes, to be precise. Trees are actually a fairly common method of storing data in computer systems because navigating trees is rather straightforward. Each node in the tree can either dictate how we navigate it or tell us which actions to execute. For example, sequence nodes dictate all children beneath a node can be executed in order from left to right. This allows for multiple behaviours to be glued together in a sensible fashion. Meanwhile, conditional nodes, where specific subtrees are only executed based on certain things being true in the world. Lastly, you have simple leaf nodes that are simply there just to execute a behaviour. Job done. This is a rather simple overview, as behaviour trees can be more complex than this. However, for the purposes of this video, this should prove sufficient to enable your understanding. Behaviour trees can then operate at a given point in gameplay by saying, OK, what's happening in the world, and what should I do now? The tree can then check whether an action is completed, and will know where to move next based upon the logic built within it. When there is nowhere else to navigate, the tree can be restarted from the root if need be or separate trees can be used, depending on which type of behaviours you want to exhibit. 
So how does all of this come together? Well, let me show you. This right here is a typical behaviour tree used in Halo 2. It's pretty big, isn't it? Lots of different behaviours in there, and it all runs on selectors. So at any given point, the NPC will decide which of these behaviours to execute. Note that the behaviours themselves are not actually fleshed out and are kept fairly abstract. So this tree is even larger than what we see here, we're just looking at it from a very particular level of abstraction. However, this doesn't tell the whole story, as there are a number of smart systems in place that impact how AI make specific decisions in certain contexts. The decision made by each covenant pays attention to the current context. The context that an NPC finds itself in, such as its type, whether it's driving a vehicle or even being a passenger in a vehicle, where the player is relative to it, these can all disable parts of the behaviour tree so the AI only knows about what it can do at any point in time. This stops it from worrying about potentially redundant or just useless actions given that it's not actually offered the opportunity to try and execute them. The next thing is given the context, you need to have priority. Priority of actions for an AI are in continual flux as the context of what that character is doing, as well as what the player is doing, are changing constantly. So as a result, while the available actions shift based on context, the priority of the available actions also shift based upon what's happening around them. This works for the majority of the time, given bots will react accordingly and prioritise attacking or defending based upon what's happening. However, sometimes this doesn't always work. Like, when you're in a vehicle and the enemy is on the ground, it might seem more sensible at that moment in time to defend or hide, rather than get in a nearby vehicle. I would guess this is largely because the context analysis does not allow for long-term decision making to be factored in. At this present moment, getting in a vehicle is going to be suicide. But in fact, in the long term, it's actually the more sensible option. To address this, Halo 2 uses what are called stimulus behaviours, where the system will create an impulse in the NPC. This immediately shifts the priority of a particular action. So now, if an elite is not in a vehicle, and Master Chief, <clears throat> you, are in a vehicle, getting into a vehicle, if one is available, will become a priority, given that it makes sense to fight fire with fire. Also, this creates one of the more memorable behaviours in Halo Combat, where grunts flee in the event their commanding officer, typically an elite, is killed by the player. One last thing to appreciate is that not only do priorities shift, but after a high priority action is executed, a delay is injected to stop the enemy from doing it again in quick succession. This makes sense for things like grenade throwing, given you don't want the player to have to dodge 10,000 grenades in the space of 3 minutes. So in this video, we've only really talked about one aspect of the Covenant AI, behaviour trees, and specifically how they work in Halo 2. Bungie have divulged a lot of information on how many of their AI systems operate, as well as a lot of the game design principles behind them, so we will most certainly come back to the Halo universe in a future video. One final thing to mention is that this is not the last time that behaviour trees have been adopted in games, far from it. They're actually rather popular in some circles. In fact, they are now the default AI type built into the Unreal Engine. As you can see here in Unreal Engine 4, there's even a visual editor that allows developers to start putting together their AI behaviours fairly quickly. With that, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more, there's a fully written blog that goes into these techniques in far greater detail. Not to mention, there are some highly useful references if you wish to find more reading material on getting started with behaviour trees. Click the link on screen now or go to the video description. See you again soon.